dancers, and welcome to danceforeplace.com, where competitors come first. I have an amazing interview today. And first, I want to lead you, read you her list of accolades because it's, it's so much. You're not going to believe how much this woman has accomplished. She's a three-time world and four-time Black Blackpool exhibition champion, a three-time Star Search champ, seven times US Open Cabaret champ. She's also a Balanchine-trained ballerina, a ballroom adjudicator. And she just recently won this incredible award, which is the best global female dancer at the Huading Awards in Macau, China. And this is the beautiful award she won. And of course, we have the fabulous uh, Sharon Savoy here today in this interview. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Melissa. Great to be here. So I want to start off talking about this, this award. This is the trophy here. Yes. <laughs> and this, when I saw the pictures and read about it, I was just like, wow, what an amazing experience it must have been. So please tell me first about this latest award you won this year. Well, when we went to China, it was uh, just like a page out of the Oscars. First of all, it was produced and directed by Don Mishner, who does the Hollywood Oscars. Okay. And we walked the red carpet. We signed autographs elbow to elbow with Nicolas Cage and Nicole Kidman. Oh, my gosh. And uh, sat at the table and did our handprints and the stars with oh Jeremy Irons and Quentin Tarantino. And it was just an incredible evening and a very exciting. Uh, Avril Lavigne won her category and sang live. And I was uh, just absolutely delighted to win um, you know, Best Global Female Dancer against some very notable and beautiful dancers like Darcy Bustle from yeah. the Royal Ballet and Marguerite Derrick, who uh, is the choreographer for her Bunheads. Yeah, it was a very strong category. I saw the nominations. So you were just in there. You know what was nice about these awards when I saw the pictures is to see, like you said, with these celebrities that dancing was given like this placement among movie stars and it was just, I mean, it was all there. It really got the respect it deserved with having a category for dancing. Yeah, I felt so honored, not just for, you know, getting the award myself, but for dance in general, because finally they said, dance is just as difficult. Dance should be just as recognized. And I think the closest thing to it would be the Kennedy Center Awards, but mm -hmm. those are all lifetime achievement awards that are uh, voted on by a nominating committee. This was uh, 21 countries were sent an internet survey wow. and able to click on the nominees and choose via what they saw video and resume wise. So really, uh, I think wonderful for dance in general to be side by side and shoulder to shoulder with Hollywood's brightest stars. For sure. That is, I, I just, those, those pictures, I have to tell you, Sharon, when I saw them, I was so, my jaw was dropped. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so exciting for you. So congratulations Thank on this award. Thank you very much. So what I wanted to talk to you about today, I mean, Sharon has done everything. She's so experienced, just a champion through and through. But I wanted to kind of just distill a little bit of your experience to share with our viewers, who, of course, are hoping to follow in your footsteps of being a champion. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, because when I look over your resume, you started as a Balanchine trained dancer. Yes. Then, of course, you became like an expert and world champ in exhibition. And you're also, of course, in the ballroom world at the same time. So my question for you is about being a well-rounded dancer. Um, you have this extensive dance background. What do you think helped you become a champion from having this diverse background in dancing? Well, it doesn't really matter uh, if you're a ballroom dancer now or a ballet dancer or a modern dancer. Uh, if you take a look at both Dancing with the Stars and So You Think You Can Dance, those are our top dance competition shows. And every one of those dancers, uh, whether on the So You Think You Can Dance, are obviously being asked to go outside their comfort zone and do a dance yes. that's not in their genre. But even our Dancing with the Stars pros are seeking out advice from Cirque du Soleil and getting hip-hop choreographers and just expanding their own dancing to bring more to television and entertainment. Well, the same thing um, applies to a competitor because it's like having more crayons to paint a painting. I love that analogy. Yeah. <laughs> so if you only have red and blue, it's not going to be very interesting. Right. But for example, if you're doing uh, a paso doble, one knows it's a Spanish dance, so you would do flamenco arms, not just arms. And, and the same thing in, in tango and smooth. You can add that kind of flair, that Spanish mm -hmm. dancing, or, or fussy arms in the foxtrot. Fox, right. Why just have it be the same line in waltz, foxtrot, and tango? They should be just as distinguishable. And I think the more that we approach 
adding performing arts into the ballroom, we just make ballroom that much more. Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, I've noticed that because it does seem like more dancers are kind of cross-training nowadays. In fact, one of the things that I hear more about is, is more competitors taking ballet. Now this is definitely a field of expertise for you. So if dancers do want to supplement their competitive dance by taking ballet, what benefit do you think specifically ballet can have for the ballroom dancer? First of all, it gives you the opportunity to work just on yourself. It's you in the mirror. That's true. Uh, when we're rehearsing with a partner, it's always how do we feel together, our connection, our musicality, and, and what we're doing together, our lead and follow. And there's not time to actually spend a focus on your foot, when that we all know about floor pressure and having a beautiful line of the foot and the curve of the foot on the floor. But so many ballroom dancers, when it leaves the floor, don't know how to create that beautiful foot without having the floor to work mm -hmm. against. Yeah. So the ballet bar gives you that time to just look in the mirror, concentrate on yourself, develop your own lines, and the better your line is, the more you are making pictures that extend beyond your little small feel. For example, if I just hold my hand here, it's nothing wrong with it. But if I actually have a long extension here, I am making a huge picture that extends firstly to the judges to see from 50 feet away, but then also for the audience to see even farther away. Right. You know, I hadn't really thought about that aspect, but you're right, because when you're partnering and when you're practicing partnering, there's always, you know, you're thinking about the partner and you're trying That's to, right. and you really don't have the time to concentrate on That's yourself right. so much. So, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but that is a great reason for them to supplement with ballet, too. Okay, so the show dance category. Now, you coach a lot of couples for, for the theater arts and the exhibition, but you also coach a lot of uh, traditional competitive couples when they wanted to show dance, if they want to add lifts into their routines. So what would you like to see when they do incorporate theater arts? What do you like to see that they do incorporate into the ballroom? Well, it's an interesting thing because uh, it's funny how when we step out of our genre, it's like we lose what we know from our own category. And what I mean by that is there's some beautiful smooth couples, and then when they go to do a lift, they don't take the principles of circular and constant flow and apply that into the transitions in and out of a lift. So they, they need to apply everything that they already know and just incorporate it into adding the lift, not act like it's a separate entity. Of, Insert lift here. Right, <laughs> okay. because then they, they look like they're walking over and picking up a girl rather than having it have this magical feeling of just seamlessness. Right. And uh, that is the illusion and beauty of lift work. Now, if you're doing a lift in Latin, you're probably using it with more of an accent. But again, you need to camouflage the entry and the exit so it's uh, unseen to the uh, audience and the viewer. Right, not so abrupt that it looks like you just right. stuck it in there. So as far as partner partnering goes, the connections and things like that, is it, a, is it different? Do you think that the problem they have making it seamless is you're actually using different types of connections for yes, lift good, work? Yes, so we're used to doing uh, horizontal leveraging when you have either Latin or standard okay. or international. We're using vertical leveraging when you do lift work. Mm, right. So the man becomes my floor. Oh, I, I like that. Right. <laughs> and I and he's my connection to the floor. Oh, yeah, because he's still down yes. in your app. That makes a lot Correct. of sense. Correct. So when we have that leverage like you would have in a handhold uh -huh. in rumba and that kind of I have to give you as much pressure as you give me, same thing. I have to press down as the man lifts up. Otherwise, my shoulders go up, I lose my top line. So, but again, it's just like in your rumba connection, it's just as unseen if it's done well. Right, okay. I'm gonna be looking for that when I watch those show dance couples. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I quickly wanted to change gears here and I wanna say, speaking about being well-rounded, you also have written a book, this fantastic book, it's called Ballroom, and I actually reviewed it on the website. So if you go to the blog, you'll see the review right there. Now. What I loved about this book, obviously you're an exhibition dancer, and I just devoured this book. I read it like within two days because it was so exciting. Um, Sharon takes you through a week at Blackpool getting ready for her competition. But what I loved about it was you talked about everything. You talked about the partnering aspect, you talked about 
the mental and physical preparation. I mean, you don't have to be an exhibition dancer. This is for anybody who's a competitor. That's right. Yeah, it was it was really great. And just really quick, one thing I thought was interesting about it was you brought up the hot button topic of politics in the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I really touched a raw nerve on that because everyone who's reviewed it went, <laughs> oh, you said the, the uh-oh word, <laughs> politics exists in ballroom. Um, well, with, with that, I just kind of, because I think some, some dancers get discouraged. So do you have just... To wrap it up, do you have a little capsule? If people think that they're being, you know, they're getting discouraged from the political system, what would you recommend to them? How can they get over that? Uh, one of the most important reasons I wrote the book was to show what it's like to compete because it's not like performing or doing a show where you're welcomed. You're going into what I refer to as the gladiator pit. And the you gladiator have to go, pit. You have to go into that <laughs> knowingly. Uh, and the other thing I remember saying in the book was everybody, thousands of people come to say they've danced at Blackpool. But there is and always will be only one winner. Mm -hmm. So why do we come back? Why do we? And it's because we all love dance. Really. So if you boil it back down to the essence of why you began to dance, and why you go to rehearsal, and why you're inspired when you feel a new piece of music or do a new move with a partner, that is why you're doing it. Right, I can't, yeah. The, the trophy is the, the gravy. The trophy is the icing. And a very lucky few, and I count myself among them, had the experience of feeling that. But the essence of why we dance is why we're there. That's great. So, so champion or not, you're, you're still enjoying the beauty of dance when you get out there on the floor. Absolutely. Love that. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Again, the book is called Ballroom with an exclamation point at the end. Check it out. It's also available on Amazon.com. Thank you so much for sitting down with us today, Sharon, and good luck with all of your future projects. Thank you, Melissa, for having me.